Right, good evening guys and welcome to another episode of Synergy Live. Episode 3 um, and tonight I've got with me uh, the wonderful Robert Briggs from uh, Crimson Crab. Um, we'll talk a little bit more in detail how Rob and I met um, throughout the interview but we're with you for half an hour guys. Um, I want Rob to tell you all about his business um, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about that now um, because Rob is going to do that himself um, but yeah guys look want you to get involved um, it's another episode of Synergy Live they've been going fantastically well I've, I always appreciate you guys coming on and watching um, as you know we do interact with as much as we possibly can whilst you're here um, but if you've got any questions at all then just drop them in the comment box um, and Rob and I will answer those questions a bit later on in the the interview so welcome to the show rob thank good to see indeed. you thanks good for coming in i've got to say um i've been really looking forward to you coming in and thank i you. mean that um uh, from the bottom of my heart because i think when i first started networking i wasn't really sure um kind of what to expect mm -hmm. and i met you at one of the first i think it was my second networking event that i met you at and um you just you just welcomed me and um good. i think you know i formed a good friendship there absolutely yeah. yeah so absolutely. so look with that in mind um tell the audience who you are and what your business is uh, okay so um my name's robert briggs and i'm from crimson crab limited um and what we do is we help uh, business owners to understand the impact of compliance issues and risks on their business um it's one of those things where we try to find out what those risks are and provide a sensible solution to to that that problem um i come from a regulatory background yeah um so back in the day i saw many good businesses going to the wall because of the regulatory spotlight falling on them and it's not a position you want to be in because no. the 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 stress the expense the difficulty of dealing with that is really hard okay okay so what we'll probably we'll, we'll definitely Definitely come on um, uh, into a little bit more detail about sure. kind of how you see compliance because um, one of the things that I really like about talking to you about this area is that you it, it doesn't have to be a, a scary subject does it no, um, uh, compliance I think a lot of business owners out there would automatically think that um, compliance is a scary topic would you agree guys I don't know drop it in the comments box um, so anyway um rob tell us more about what your role is within the business and how you help drive the business okay. forward well my expectation when i started uh running my own business some years ago uh with wendy my my wife was that uh, i'd be doing what i'm passionate about and that's that helping businesses to to understand their their problems and, yeah. and trying to stop them getting into those difficult areas that we talked about earlier but i very quickly realized that actually that's not the case. You yeah. have to understand loads and loads of different things. Um, so I became a bit of a jack of all trades. Um, it was do that to be successful or outsource. Okay. And one of the issues with outsourcing I found was that actually you meet lots of nice people when you're networking, but you don't actually know whether they're good at what they say they're going to do or whether course, they're going to yeah. deliver what you want for your business. Yeah. So that was one of the reasons why we started our reputation advocates okay right? yeah and that, i wanted to just mention that because yeah tell us more about the reputation okay. advocates because I, I guys i know a little bit about, about the reputation advocates and it's something that synergy support um but yeah tell them more a bit, a bit about that okay this this all found uh, started because we we had a a client uh, a great client really really good um business um and they'd uh, employed the services of a web designer um, and that web designer designed them a beautiful looking website, really, really good. And then one day, one of their clients came along to them and said, look, um, we want a website to, to start doing some sales online. And they said, well, use ours, they're great. Okay. So they did. Unfortunately, this web designer hadn't actually ever designed a shop before. Right. So it, to be honest, it was a disaster. Okay. Um, the upshot of that was that their they lost their client yeah there was bad feeling etc cetera, etc cetera. so we thought well, okay what can we do about this and, and we, we looked at those uh, there's plenty of uh, shopping tips out there and uh, sites you can go to to get reviews on this person and that person but we wanted something for business owners yeah so that they could almost have the diligence done for them okay so all our reputation advocates work to a code of conduct and that says that they'll you know operate in an ethical legal and responsible way yeah but also that if something does go wrong they'll put it right and we have a contractual understanding with them a contractual obligation that they'll actually comply with those 
um, yeah. those obligations. So, you know, our reputation advocates are our vetted experts. Fantastic. Um, it's good to kind of have that um, uh, network of um, trusted businesses that you can Absolutely. refer to and uh, refer on to, I know, you, you know, um, through working closely with us, um, it's something that we, we certainly um, see value in is uh, having that trusted source. I mean, within the Synergy Success Network, um, we like to be able to have trusted sources that we can refer our customers on to. So it works very, um, very similar to that. Um, so we talked a bit about kind of what your role within the business is, what sort of services that you offer. With that in mind, how long have you guys been running now, Rob? So the business has been working, uh, it's been running for eight years, okay. and uh, I've been with it for seven years. Seven years? Yeah. Wow, okay. So you did, did you found the business then, or...? Well, I, I helped Wendy set it up. Okay. Um, yeah. I said, but she. Um, uh, Wendy's Rob's wife, by the way. I just want to get that out there. So yeah. <laughs> wife and managing director. <laughs> wife and managers. Okay. So, so she really does wear the trousers, then, yeah, Rob. Yeah. She's the boss. <laughs> Brilliant. So uh, I'm just waiting for a comment from her. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on the comments at the moment. So um, it looks as though we've got a few people that are, that are kind of uh, what I like to call lurkers coming on <laughs> a little. While. Watch. Yeah. Um, so, guys, don't forget. Look, Rob Briggs is here with me tonight. Drop your comments in in the comments box below. We're talking all things compliance and just trying to get the message across of it. Doesn't have to be a scary subject. Doesn't have to be a taboo subject. Um, and um, Rob's the guy for you to do it. Um, so, Rob, tell us about your greatest. You know, you said you, you've been going sort of eight years now. Um, tell us about your greatest business achievement. In that eight years, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting I bet there's question. There's a few to, to well, choose from. Probably. There are, and, and so what I'd like to say is actually, it's 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 really helping those businesses that uh, it's helping businesses to understand what the risks are that they're facing from compliance, yeah. because I think one of the big issues is, you know, it's hard to understand what it is that uh, you're going into. Yeah. So quite often people will start a business, um, and and not really think about the regulatory framework that goes around that. Yeah, sure. Now, you know. Talk about all these high losing words, regularly framework, and all those sort of things. It's actually getting down to the nitty gritty and understanding what those things are that they, they need to comply with. Yeah. So, for example, running a shop, you might need to comply with certain uh, rules around uh, cancellation uh, of contracts. Okay. Um, running an online shop, again, the rules around cancellation, but also making sure that uh, you look after people's data correctly. So, there are a number of things there. And we've seen businesses that we've helped grow and prosper. Uh, and that's really what gives me that satisfaction. So yeah. they're basically our achievements. Brilliant, brilliant. And it's more of a what I mean compared to what you used to do when you back in your trading standards days. Mm. Um, this is more of a preventative measure, isn't it? Is, is is it? Would it? Would I be right in saying that you guys are there to make sure that they never get into that situation where trading standards are knocking at their door? Absolutely. Yeah. The 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 whole thing of trying to deal with those regulators, they're, they're experts in their own field. That That's what they do day in, day out. So they, they know the rules, they know the law inside out. Yeah. And if you come, if, if you have one on knocking on your door, then you you are in a difficult position because you're, you're straight on the back foot. And really what the regulator you know, there's a way of approaching regulators, and, and if you're open and honest with them, and, and say, look, we're doing our best to comply, yeah, they're much more likely to be in a position of trying to help you to comply, rather than if you say to them, well, actually, go away. Yeah. In that circumstance, they're going to look at you and go, right, we'll sort this out because they have a job to do. What they want is compliance, um, and they see that as protecting um, the weaker party in a contract. So okay. Okay. Quite important. Sure. Um, I mean, do you find that a lot of the businesses that you're working with um, just freeze and in, in fear of compliance and and those areas? Because I, I'm I'm just trying to I'm, I'm trying to connect with the audience here and probably trying to, to to analyze what they might be thinking. And and I know it's something that Mark and I have discussed. And when you think compliance, you think, oh Christ, you know, we've yeah. got this person that's going to be looking over our business. Can you kind of dispel any myths that would that would help the audience understand that you're there to help them and not there to kind of rake them over hot coals, yeah, so absolutely. to speak. That was my previous job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I think now, you know, having that opportunity to to talk with businesses about the risks they might face mm. and, and really open people's eyes to those things they can do. Because 
compliance doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, you know, certain things can be. It depends on what, what you're doing. Yeah. But it doesn't need to be overly complex. It just needs you to take a few steps to make sure that you build into your business a, a solid foundation on which to grow. Yeah. And I always, I always say those things, you know, get certain things right and you can't really go wrong. Yeah. Uh, as long as you've got the processes in place Absolutely. and you can fall back on those and say, look, Absolutely. this is our process. Um, you know, if the regulator comes knocking, you can say, um, what can we do better? Yeah. Um, you, you know, and, and straight away you're asking for help, you're getting them on board. And I think, you know, it's that it's that knowledge of what there is out there that needs complying with that's the important part. Of absolutely, absolutely. So there you go, guys. Um, Rob is uh, explaining to us that um, this this area of compliance is it's, it's crucially important to your business. Um, and whilst it might be something that you, uh, I mean, I, I I would go as far to say as, as there's probably a lot of stuff surrounding compliance that one just wouldn't think about usually yeah, you know i've absolutely. i've learned from you there's stuff that um i've picked up and probably would never have thought about in the past uh, but now you do you're consciously aware of that and it just yeah so. yeah it, it, it it's, it's you start to look for it yeah um and i think this is one of the the things you know as we develop uh, a good online presence uh, the website's there it's a it's a window to the uh, world it's great for your customers and clients to look at yeah and they can get great value from your website the trouble is so can the regulator the regulator can look at a website yeah. and start understanding your approach to compliance because if it's a laissez-faire approach and, uh, and, and you're you know not taking those steps it's very evident from the website um, that gives them an in and lets them start thinking about what you're doing yeah. you know, if, if that's combined with because quite often regulators work on the basis of um, intelligence led approaches so they're looking for complaints oh. if they've got a complaint about your business straight away the first port call is website what's this business like is it being run well or is it a bit of a hodgepodge yeah if it's a hodgepodge we need to do something about that and you know okay. it's, it's having that understanding so that you can build your business build your reputation yeah on those absolutely. pillars so i mean obviously with the compliance side of things guys you're looking it's <laughs> it's all to do with your business reputation as well um what i'd urge you guys to do um i mean obviously we are live at the moment but the video will be available to watch later on um, if you have any questions whatsoever relating to your business compliance um, and, and where you might need support, please drop them in the comment box. We will come back to you even after the live is finished. Um, and no doubt, Rob will be um, more than happy to, 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 to help other, other people. Um, okay, so let's move on with a few more questions, Rob. Um, I want to know a little bit more about what your plans are for Crimson Crab. So where are you guys um, looking to take the business um, at this stage? Eight years in, you know, where, where's, where are you going with Crimson Crab? Well, our, our vision is to make compliance easy. Okay. Our, you know, I'm not trying to undermine <laughs> what we've been talking about. No. But I think that the you know, there's plenty of information out there for people. So take uh, date perception as a, as a good example. Um, the Information Commissioner has a wonderful website which has loads of information on it about compliance aspects and, and so on and so forth. But I think you need to be fairly um, aware of what regulations are in the first place to actually navigate the Information Commissioner's website. So what we want to do is to, to build in processes so people can um, access that information that's bespoke for their business. So what we're looking at doing is, uh, I'm very keen on collaboration and collaborative approaches. Yes. So we're working, uh, for example, with with um, a company called Sim Compliance, who happens to be one of our reputation advocates. Um, but we're looking at how we deliver sensible, easily followed advice on yeah. health and safety. Um, okay. I know it's a big issue area. Um, people, uh, you know, have different views on health and safety. Um, I think it's one of those things where people, you know, recognise it. it does need to be a priority, but it's to what extent you go to to deal with that. So um, the Grounded Safety website um, has a portal which people can sign up to and it basically helps them to do their health and safety compliance simply. Okay. So we're building a number of collaborations in those areas. So I'm, That's wonderful. We're looking at um, HR um, and we're also looking at... Um, uh, environmental protection because I know you know that's another issue area where the law is uh, is there uh, it's a hot topic at the moment um, mm. and rightly so yeah of course, um, and yeah. I think that you know people may have that uh, that view about uh, environmental issues but 
the law says certain things which you need to, 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 to understand and deal with. Absolutely. And I think it's worth us um, highlighting the fact that um, even kind of with our followers at Synergy, a lot of them are, are working within the construction industry, so, or within the trades industry. That's kind of where we add our most value to our customers um, and, and our followers. Um, and there is no, well, Again, I don't want to downplay this this uh, this subject by any stretch, but within the construction sector, compliance is oh, what well, it's it's, it's, it's it's hot stuff, isn't it? Right? It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, guys, what what the point I'm trying to get across is here is, uh, you know, if you are in the construction industry and you're working within the construction industry, the, the, this 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 area, this topic. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to bring Rob on tonight is because this is going to offer you guys real value. And um, if you do need support in any of those areas, Crimson Crab's the um, place to go. I really think that, you know, compliance shouldn't be a barrier to doing something. No. It, it should never get in the way of a, of a project that you're undertaking, no matter what your industry, but particularly in construction. And that's why I want to make this as easy as possible for people to be able to do what they need to do and move on. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so um, Rob, what would you suggest would be your top tip for business owners um, when we do, when we talk about this this subject? What, what would you suggest is a top tip? Okay, I think I've already alluded to it, and that's the website. Okay, get your yeah. website right. Yeah. It's it's out there. It's it's your it's your reputation online. It absolutely and is. Yeah. You know, regulators, as I said, can can look at that quite happily. Uh, they can they can do. Um, when I started in, in trading standards, we used to go out and physically visit uh, premises. Uh, if we got eight done in a day, that was great. Um, when I left, um, I was looking for my officers to do a hundred website checks a day, um, and you know they can do those much more quickly. They can get a feel for a business and target those businesses that are not compliant. Okay. And website compliance is dead easy. Right. Okay. So um, when we talk about website compliance, um, maybe give some some of the you know the audience a, sure. um, a few tips on how they can. Well, I think the the, the biggie there is data protection. You get data protection right. If you've got um, contact forms, you need to explain what you're going to be doing with people's personal data. Yeah. Um, to comply with legislation, um, you need to think about copyright. Um, now, it's not necessarily a compliance issue, but you know people do. Um, borrow material from from websites. Yeah, um, I've seen whole websites almost copied word for word. Really? Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, and Very that's original. what it's. <laughs> yeah. But what it does is, I mean, it, it, it's trying to trade on your reputation. Um, yeah. And you know, if you've got a good way of working, a good business model, um, and someone thinks they can use that, um, the easiest way of doing that is to pinch your material. Okay. Uh, I've seen pictures borrowed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I've seen pictures used for marketing, um, and so on and so forth. So, you know, they're, they're some of the areas, but there are other things on websites that you need to get right. Mm. Um, there's disclosure. Yeah. Um, now, you must have your disclosure on your website. Now, when I say disclosure, if you're using a business name, yeah. then you need to actually tell your, um, your viewers who it is that's actually trading. So if you're a limited company, that's obviously the limited company details. And as soon as you're a limited company, you have to put the full name, yeah. the registered office address, the um, registration number, yeah. and also where you're registered, which could be England and Wales, um, uh, uh, Scotland, Northern Ireland, or indeed another place. Oh. Um, but that all has to appear on the website for, for a limited company. If you're a sole trader, then the name of the sole trader has to appear on the website if you're using a business name okay. along with an address. And this is a legal requirement? Absolutely. Yeah. Requirement. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, the impact is, one, it's a legal comment, so you could be um, prosecuted for not having it, but one of the other impacts is that your um, contracts may not be enforceable if you don't comply with the disclosure requirements. Oh. So there is a bit of a, you know, a, a regulation and compliance is not just about complying with legal requirements, it's also making sure that your business is robust and that if you do have contracts in place with people, they're legally enforceable. Yes. So that's my other tip. Yeah. Make sure you've got good contracts 
terms of business and so on, contracts with any suppliers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Absolutely, absolutely, guys. Look, guys, I, I really hope that you're enjoying um, tonight's episode of Synergy Live. Um, we're talking all things compliance tonight and uh, making sure that you guys keep yourselves out of trouble out there in the business world. Um, don't forget, if you do want to ask um, Rob any questions um, towards the end of the interview. We'll jump on and we'll answer as many as we possibly can. Um, I have also put the link in the comments, in the comment area um, for Rob's website, and that's www.crimsoncrab.co.uk. Um, head across to there and you can find out as much information about the business as possible. Um, so there's something else that you guys do, um, which I wanted to pick up on tonight. Um, I know I've... Um, Obviously, we're the Synergy Success Network, and um, you guys have created your own network over at Crimson Crab, um, known as the F2 Huddle. Yeah, it's a it's um it's a network event that I've been to, guys. It's it's a great networking event. Um, I have to say, I've been to many over the last few months, um, and I'm not just saying this because you're sat here, Rob. I absolutely genuinely believe that it's a really good format um and fantastic setup um and yeah it's 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 a great great place to go and, and network um tell the audience a little bit more about the f2 huddle well firstly i'm glad you 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 mentioned it. i'm glad you get uh, value from it um and it will be music to wendy's ears because uh, <laughs> the f2 good huddle good. is his her baby Wendy hasn't joined us tonight. Where is no, she? No, I know. I, yeah. I should be having words. <laughs> yeah, she's. Been, I bet she's sat in the bath with a glass of wine. <laughs> Rob's out, so she's thinking, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, okay, so this was. Uh, this has been running for three years now. The F2 three Huddle. Three years, really? Yeah, I didn't realise. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, we've been to, like you say, n a number of networking events, and we wanted to do something a bit different. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to have networking with a purpose, and to us the purpose was to be able to talk about issues, talk about business in a safe environment. Mm. So F2, it's the second Friday of every month, hence the F2. Yeah. Um, it runs from 12 till 2 at um, the... Uh, um, oh, this me, where is it? Danville's, is it? Danville's Club. That's... Yeah. Danville's Club in Haven. Yeah. And we have a great lunch. Uh, provided by uh, Chef Sam. I have to say, guys, <laughs> the food is brilliant. So even if you just want to pop along for a bit of lunch, it's uh, <laughs> definitely the place to go. Yeah, it's really good. Mm. Um, he, he does us proud. Um, mm. And we have a, a learning slot. We call it a reputation matters slot, uh, where someone will come along and give, um, an expert will come along and give an insight into reputation issues from the perspective of their particular industry. Okay. So some top tips, some some helpful advice, uh, some things to think about. Um, I think I've enjoyed every single one that we've had. That's it great. gives a great, yeah, it, it makes you think every time, oh, yeah, I haven't thought about that. Yeah. And it gives you something to go away and think about. And that's, um, you know, quite often you can go along to networking events and, and try and look for the value that you're going to take away. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been to so many that offer some fantastic value. Um, uh, but the F2 huddle, really, you've got it. You've got it. You've got it spot on. It's brilliant. Well, I think that the huddles themselves help because mm. that, the huddles are great. Yeah, well, I really enjoyed the huddles. <laughs> uh, that's Yeah, that's awesome. I met some good people that day. Well, it gives you the opportunity to actually have a, an in-depth conversation. So yeah. we, we, we don't do 40 seconds or a minute or whatever we do three minutes and that gives you time to, to talk about whatever you want to talk about and it yeah. is that idea of sharing ideas or bouncing ideas around in a safe environment um so yeah so i'm, I'm glad you like it yeah no it's awesome and guys if you you know if any of our followers and i know some of you out there are serial networkers um what we'll do is we'll we'll put some information um about the f2 huddle into the into the uh, comments um and if you because is there a, a landing page that they can go and have a look there is yeah um, it's it's uh, you can either go onto a website um because you can register for um do it because i know i'll get my email so yeah. yeah you can you can book your place you can ask for um to sign up to the uh, guest list yeah um, and we send you invites and so on and so forth but you can you can book a place you can find out where it is you can get yeah. directions and all, all those sort of things actually on the on the website great head across to the crimson crab website it's in the comments box um i highly recommend the f2 huddle thank you brilliant okay so moving on um so 
I've got a question here because uh, we talked about maybe kind of, uh, you know, making sure that we get some messages across. And I've got a question here. Sir. So so there are so many rules that it seems um, that you don't know kind of uh, what you're doing until it's too late. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people can probably resonate with that. Um, so how can people find out about this okay. and, and how can Crimson Crab support that? Okay, well, it's it's that age-old question. You, you you don't know what you don't know. Oh, uh, Mark <laughs> says that all the time. It's yeah. all the time. Yeah. It's it's a great phrase, and it, and it, and it, I just think it's so true. Um, yeah. So what we offer here is um, a business MOT. And yes. A, you, you, you yes, MOT. we've experienced the business MOT. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what that does is it, it it really identifies some of the. I mean, we have a, an in-depth conversation. Um, it lasts anywhere between an hour and a half to two hours. And we talk about around about 45 different subjects. Now, they don't all apply to every single business. Um, some won't apply. Some will apply, apply more to, to one type of business than another. Um, but what we do is we explore all those. Um, I'm looking for the business owner's confidence, if you like, in those particular areas, but also what risk that poses to that particular business. Okay. And we all do the risk assessment in terms of what impact will there be if something goes wrong? And how likely is it to go wrong? Standard risk assessment. Yeah. And then what we produce is a risk log for each business that yeah. we visited, provide that to the business, along with some commentary on some sensible strategies they can take to alleviate that. And if there's any help that people need, we can support them in, in those areas. Mm -hmm. But the business MOT, um, I say it's a great starting point. Uh, it's available on our website. Um, and what I thought I'd do is to, to add a bit more value to tonight's event, hopefully, is to offer um, three business MOTs for free to okay. anyone yeah. who wants to take one up. So Fantastic. plus three we get. Okay. Well, guys, look, there you go. I wasn't actually expecting that. Um, so uh, Rob has just offered anybody that engages with us this evening a free business MOT. Now, why wouldn't you want to give your business an MOT? You wouldn't leave your car without an MOT. Um, so why leave your business at risk? Um, guys, it's a great offer. Rob, I wasn't expecting that. Um, if the audience want to drop a message or a, a comment in the comments box, please do. Um, as I say, Synergy Success Network have um, had their own business MOT. We've gone for it. We've seen it. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely a good, good, um, good tool to kind of uh, explore. So go, uh, get involved, guys. Um, it's definitely worth it. Um, so look, we're coming to the end of the interview, and I've really enjoyed it. And I hope the audience have enjoyed learning a little bit more about um, compliance related issues because um, it is an important subject um, so just before we tie up tonight we try and leave the audience knowing a little bit more about our guests right so going to push you a bit out of your comfort zone here Rob I'm afraid um, I'd like for you to tell the audience um, an interesting fact about yourself that nobody else would know until you reveal now live on Synergy Live okay um, so um I once got an award from the RSPCA. Right. Okay. For, that's the that's the animal protection. It is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I I'm I, intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> well, I took part in a rescue of a number of horses. Wow. Uh, that were in the sea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and got them to land. Really. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna to want to know a bit more, aren't you? <laughs> Tell us more. We need to know more. We need to know more. Okay. Well, you can't leave us hanging like that. <laughs> Back in the day, uh, I spent 20 years on a lifeboat on okay. Hailing Island. So um, Hailing Island has uh, two uh, inshore lifeboats, they call them. Yeah. So one is a rigid inflatable, um, a seven and a half metre boat, and the other is um, a rubber duck, rubber flubber, um, a D <laughs> boat. Um, and this one night we were out on an exercise and uh, the, the, there are quite a few people exercise their horses on one of the sandbanks on Hailing Island. There, yes, I've seen them over there before, yeah. yeah. Well, unfortunately this night they got uh, um, cut off by the tide. Were um, they horsing around? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happened? <laughs> well, we were on scene and... and got there in the lifeboats but one of the things we quickly learned was that horses won't get into a lifeboat they just will not have it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they also don't like being towed because they're quite near to the animal motors uh, yeah. that wasn't on so we learn how to 
um, get them ashore and, and, and basically what you have to do is tow them backwards by their bridle right. with one of the uh, crew actually in the water holding them up with their life jackets inflated so wow. that, that keeps their head out of the water. Um, horses are interesting swimmers, they, they're not strong swimmers but they can swim a little bit yeah. um, but broadly we <laughs> towed them into the beach, got them ashore got the riders back into the shore as well and um what a fantastic achievement well it was it was we were very proud of it as a, yeah, as a crew yeah, um, yeah. it's quite unusual uh oh, i'm sorry i've just I've, I've had this image come in my head you talking about um being on a lifeboat and that i'm now picturing you with a red can on a beach <laughs> sort of looking out doing your best david hasselhoff impression yeah no <laughs> <laughs> well look guys that, that ties things up for tonight um Thank you ever so much for coming on, Rob. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's always great to have you um, in the office. Um, guys, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, you know, I, I, I always appreciate anybody that comes on and watches a Synergy Live. Um, if there is anything, any topic that you'd like for us to explore, please, please do drop me a line. Um, and we'll be back next week, same time, with a new guest, um, and we'll look forward to seeing you then. So, yeah, see you later. Good night. See you later. Goodbye, guys.